In this video, we're going to talk about configuring what's called password setting objects or PSOs in Active Directory. Now, normally passwords in an Active Directory domain are all set the same as far as their complexity requirements, length and history and so on. However, in Active Directory, by utilizing a password setting object, you can actually change those policies for specific users. So let's go ahead and jump in on that. Jump in and see what that looks like. So here I have a, an Active Directory domain. Uh, this is a very simple domain, uh, just installed. I see I have it, this uh, brand new work, a brand new domain, DC1 on test2016.local. If I open up Active Directory users and computers, we will see that there are no additional users created. And the only change is the addition of a brand new workstation, a brand new computer called DC2. So what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I want to, first off, I wanna make a change to the existing group policy. Uh, because I'm gonna be creating some users and I'm going to be changing their passwords, I want to make sure that I can go ahead and do that. And for that, I'm gonna come into group policy management right here. I'm going to edit the default domain policy. There we go. And I'm going to change the policy for the minimum password age. Uh, minimum password age is currently one day, but I want to be able to change this password frequently as a demonstration. So I'm going to set it to zero so I can change it immediately. All right, with that set, let's go ahead and let's create a user and a security group. So let's see, back into Active Directory users and computers, I'm going to create a user here and let's call this new user. Let's call him admin user one. Let's actually make this a little bit bigger to see. There we go, admin user one, admin user one. Super secret password, password 01, and there we go. Next, next, there we go. So we've got admin user one. At the same time, I'm going to create a security group. Group, and I will call this just admin users. And uh, the idea is that I have all of my administrative users, such as all of the people in IT or all the people with elevated permissions, and they are all added into this admin users group. Uh, while I'm at it, let's add that admin user one into the admin users group. Great. Okay, so the idea again is that the admin users group holds everybody who has elevated permissions in my organization. So this might be IT, this might be specialized uh, administrators working for special areas. Uh, this might be HR or finance who handle money or have other elevated permissions. This may even be some executives in my organization. People that have such extensive permissions to the environment that I want to further lock down their passwords to make it harder for them to get into. All right, um, now that I've done that, I'm gonna come on over to my other machine here and let's actually add in uh, let's open up Computer Manager uh, and I wanna add in my user here uh, as an admin because I'm gonna be looking at some administrative properties. Let's see, so admin user one. I want this admin user one user to be able to log in and then look at some various properties on this computer. So let's actually do that. Let's go ahead and log in as our admin user one. Uh, sign out. Sign into the domain. Admin user one, password one. Password one. What? Oh. 
Password of one. All right, apparently I set the password wrong. Somehow I typoed the password twice. And so then when I come in here, now it should work. All right, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and let's make this screen a little bit easier to read. There we go. And I'm gonna open up an administrative command prompt. Uh, not just a normal command prompt, an administrative command prompt, and then I have to change my display again. Uh, so there's two things I wanna run here. First is a GP update slash force, uh, telling it to go ahead and download the latest group policies. Uh, just in case there's anything changed, such as the password policy that I just changed, setting the minimum age to zero days. Once that's done, I'm gonna run rsop.msc, which is the resultant set of policies, management snap-in. This will show me all of the policies that are applied to the group, or to, the, to this computer and to this user. And we'll see Windows security, account policies, password policy. Here, the minimum password length is seven and the minimum age is zero as expected. So that means if I go ahead and I change my password from password 01 to password 02, that should work. That's more than seven characters. Password 02 actually is 10 characters, so it's more than that. Uh, minimum password age in this case is zero days, so it doesn't matter the fact that I just set this to password 01. Uh, and it should work. Well, let's try it. Go ahead and change password from password 01 to password 02. Yes, and confirm. Great. Password has been changed. And that was actually what we expected. Now I want to change things up. I want this admin user. Remember, we're talking about elevated users here. Everybody who is in my admin group is elevated and therefore they shouldn't have a seven character password. Uh, their minimum, I'm gonna say is 15. Let's see what we can do. So if I come back into my group policy or back into my domain controller, I could open up the group policy editor and I could come into the group policy settings, group policy management console. I could come into the default domain policy and edit it and then change the, uh, the window settings for the passwords and set the minimum password length here to 15. However, that would set it for everybody in the business. Uh, from a security standpoint, that's a great thing. From a usability standpoint, not so much. So I can't set this to 15 for everybody. And that's historically has been my only option. It was an all or nothing kind of configuration. With Active Directory nowadays, we can create a password setting object, which only changes the policies for specific users. And we don't do that through the Group Policy Management Console, so I'll close that. What I do is I come in through the Active Directory Administrative Center. In the Active Directory Administrative Center, I look through my domain and I'm looking for the system object. Inside of system, I will see a password settings container, which currently is blank. It's empty. Uh, so we can see up here the, the history. Here's the domain systems, password settings container. Now I can go ahead and right click and new password settings. So let's create some new password settings. This is for admin users. This is for elevated users. So let's call this elevated passwords. 
Uh, precedence, if you have multiple password setting objects, uh, they can be applied in a various precedence uh, or, or a certain order. The last one to apply wins. I'll type a precedence of 10. That way later if I have to come in, I can set one at five or I can set one at 15, all depending on the order I want these to apply. And now we'll start to notice pretty much all the settings that we've saw through the group policy. Minimum password length. We don't want seven days or seven, seven characters. We just said we want 15. Oh, password history, 24. Minimum password age, I'm going to set that again to zero. There we go. I'll just uncheck it. Uh, it didn't want it. Didn't like me setting it to zero. Interesting. Uh, and then maximum password age. Maybe I want to change this specifically for these admin users because they have highly uh, more secure passwords. Maybe I want to set that to 180. Uh, we can then also change the password uh, lockout settings and so on. Okay, so now we've got a separate password setting object. How do I apply that to my elevated users? Well, right down here. It directly applies to, I can say add, and then I choose my elevated users or my admin users group. Shows up right in there. I could have also added in individual users. Uh, you normally would want to do this as groups, however. Okay, and that's it. Now, everybody who comes in and is a member of this admin user group, currently just admin user one, will receive that new password setting. Let's check it out. Our admin user one, uh, I think I have to log off and then log back in just to be sure. Uh, but before I do that, let's close RSOP. I'm gonna do a GP update just to make sure we have the latest updates. Uh, and then I'm gonna log off and log back in, remembering that I changed this password to password02. Uh, sign out. Password02. I can still log in with the current password because I haven't had to change it yet. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and open up that administrative command prompt again, and let's confirm what our group policy says. So I run rsop.msc, and then we start looking through the group policy for the password settings. Maybe. Uh, it still says the uh, minimum password like this seven. So group policy hasn't changed. But does that mean I can change my password now from password 02 to password 03? Let's check it out. So I'm currently at password 02. Oops. That's my current password. Let's see if I can change that to password 03. And one more. And now we get that not super helpful description. Uh, value provided does not meet the length, complexity, or history requirements. But for the domain, it actually does. The domain we just looked at, it said seven characters. But because this user is a member of that admin users group, who we applied a password setting object to, it doesn't meet those requirements of 15 characters. So let's try that again. So I go from password 02, nope. There we go. To password, I'm gonna do a really simple but long password. So password 01234567989. That looks right. And now I hit enter. 
and now it changes the password. So the password setting objects allow you to make exceptions for your organization. While in group policy, you would have one standard policy for everybody with regards to the passwords, you can then come in and make exceptions, hopefully to strengthen specific users uh, in order to secure their passwords or their accounts in a slightly different manner.